the realization of yourself as essence identity can be continuous and that is you could call that as spiritual practice but it's not really the right term it's simply continuously directing attention in your daily life in addition to paying attention to whatever you need to pay attention to directing attention to what directing attention to attention becoming aware right for example now becoming aware that you are conscious right now that's a strange thing there's no content to that there's simply a presence and for that to happen and i'm finally getting to it that is there needs to be the cessation of thought and so this is my invitation to you you do not need to think continuously in your daily life it's if your mind tells you that if you do not think and do not worry then your life is going to collapse that is not true it's a lie but your mind might either explicitly or implicitly say that you need to i need to really think about my life my thinking has its place it's a wonderful tool it's it can be used for manifesting it can be used for creating it's a tool but if it takes you over if you're identified with the tool then it becomes to possess you and that's a terrible limitation so the the new state of consciousness is a mixture of thought and spaciousness so that you can go about your daily life walking from point a to point b <coughs> in that state of simple aware presence let's do it now i'm call it do best not doing involved simply become aware of yourself as you sit here just as i am aware of myself as a conscious presence this is a very strange thing it's it's not you can't say oh uh, i'm you you cannot become an object to yourself in this uh, everything else is an object that arises in your consciousness an object of consciousness but knowing yourself you can you cannot be an object in your own consciousness so you cannot know yourself in a subject object relationship in at the deepest level you can only know yourself as the eternal subject the there is a space of stillness in that moment of being of knowing yourself as the essence identity there is an an alive sense of stillness and presence like let's separate let's let's just say my 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 two hands this is thought you're thinking and then you go and here is a space of no thought just awareness you can't define what that is you can't think about it you can only be it stillness is one word we could use to point to it stillness has nothing to do whether there's noise outside or not is in a stillness is the cessation of thinking without loss of consciousness and that is realizing yourself 
as the unconditioned consciousness, because everything else is conditioned by the past. But that is the unconditioned in you. That is your essence identity. You cannot, by exercising willpower, that is not the way to go to stop yourself from thinking. I do, I'm not even saying stop thinking as an active practice. But simply become so alert that thinking stops by itself. One way you can do it is by becoming aware of sense perceptions, acutely aware of sense perceptions. I give the example in The Power of Now of a, of a cat watching the mouse hole. And the cat watching the mouse hole in the, is in that state of absolute attention. And the cat goes, No, you don't have to stare like that, but <laughs> that is the state of, that is this state of awareness, consciousness, that's the only thing in your life that you cannot question. That the only thing that is absolutely and undoubtedly real. Everything else you can question for example, whether our gathering here is a dream or not, you don't really know. It could be that you are dreaming, that you're sitting here and there's a man talking on a chair suggesting to you that you might be dreaming. You cannot, as many philosophers have pointed out, you cannot know for sure that this life that you're experiencing is not a kind of dream. And from one certain one perspective, it is a kind of dream. Look at, I, I like to sometimes look at old photographs made taken in 1900, early days of photography, 1920, whenever, of street scenes or gatherings, and you look, you, you can go to second-hand shops and they sell sometimes old photographs. You can buy one for a penny or two. You have no idea who these people are, nor has anybody else an idea who these people are. But they are running around the city street, excited about this or that. And then there's another gathering, see people sitting around a table, eating and laughing in this old photo. And where is that now? It has evaporated like a dream. Nobody even remembers who they are. <laughs> and that is the same with anything that you experience here. It quickly evaporates. It's, so there is a dream-like quality to human existence, any existence. Uh, so you could say, okay, maybe it's all a dream. That may well be. But, but one thing you cannot doubt that is that you are conscious. Because if you're not conscious, there couldn't be a dream. A dream can only arise in the light of consciousness. So the one thing, whether or not this is a dream or not, is becomes irrelevant. The only thing that matters, if it is a dream, is whether you can realize what the essence of the dream is. Consciousness. And you can only realize that directly, here and now as this, oh, Descartes, of course, the French philosopher said, I think, therefore I am. If he had waited a little bit longer before saying anything, <laughs> he could have come to the point of cessation of thinking, and then he could have made the more profound statement, I am conscious, therefore I am. Thinking is only an expression of consciousness, a surface expression of consciousness. This mind-made sense of self is also much more focused on the negative than the positive.
to be free, you awaken to who you are beyond your history and your life situation.